So we know that our nonverbals govern how other people think and feel about us. There's a lot of evidence, but our question really was, do our nonverbals govern how we think and feel about ourselves? There's some evidence that they do. So, for example, um, when we, we smile when we feel happy, but also when we're forced to smile by holding a pen in our teeth like this, it makes us feel happy. So it goes both ways. When it comes to power, um, it also goes both ways. So when you, when you uh, feel powerful, you're more likely to do this, but it's also possible that um, when you, when you uh, pretend to be powerful, you are more likely to actually feel powerful. So the second question really was, you know, so we know that our minds change our bodies, but is it also true that, that our bodies change our minds? And when I say minds in the case of the powerful, what am I talking about? So I'm talking about thoughts and feelings and the sort of physiological things that make up our, our thoughts and feelings. And in my case, that's hormones. I look at hormones. So what do the minds of the powerful versus the powerless look like? So powerful people, tend to be, not surprisingly, more assertive and more confident, uh, more, more optimistic. They actually feel that they're going to win even at games of chance. Uh, they also tend to be able to think more abstractly. So there are a lot of differences. They take more risks. There are a lot of differences between powerful and powerless people. Physiologically, there also are differences. On two key hormones, testosterone, which is the dominance hormone, and cortisol, which is the stress hormone. So what we find is that um, uh, high-power alpha males in primate hierarchies have high testosterone and low cortisol, and powerful and effective leaders also have high testosterone and low cortisol. So what does that mean? When you think about power, ten people tended to think only about testosterone because that was a, about dominance. But really, power is also about how you react to stress. So do you want the high-power leader that's dominant, high on testosterone, but really stress reactive? Probably not, right? You want the person who's powerful and assertive and dominant, but not very stress reactive, the person who's laid back. So we know that in, uh, in, in primate hierarchies, if an alpha needs to take over, uh, if, if an individual needs to take over an alpha role sort of suddenly, Within a few days, that individual's testosterone has gone up significantly and his cortisol has dropped significantly. So we have this evidence, both that the body can shape the mind, at least at the facial level, um, and also that role changes can shape the mind. 